this video might be a little bit different from what we've uh, produced before. Yes, it will involve a rugby context, but a little bit at a larger life context about your experiences and how your experiences or your challenging experiences can be the making of you. I think we know this, uh, maybe even intuitively, how it's resistance that increases capacity. You go to the gym and you're challenged and you work hard and you see the results. You go for a run for the first time and you struggle uh, to try and stay alive and get to the end and yet as you do it more you begin to get a capacity about a handle um, going and, and hitting the streets, hitting the pavement and extending through various and increasing distances. Again, back to the gym. A muscle grows when it is torn. And as we put ourselves through challenges, we're exposed to these contexts, then we can respond positively. That's not always the case, especially in our modern culture where uh, there can be a way of trying to downplay resistance or downplay challenges. And I've been thinking about this recently in an Ian Foster context. And as I've completed a previous video on the man, uh, it's, it's clear if you've interacted with me that Ian Foster wasn't whom I wanted to be the all-black coach. I was of Razor Robertson. I believed post-2019, even leading into 2019, this all-black side, this all-blacks team, this all-blacks culture needed a breath of fresh air. And Razor was the man who's able to bring together not only on the field and unite a coaching team, but also create a culture that leads to flourishing. And we've seen that with the Crusaders. And so even the choice of Foster uh, has been has been challenging in the years, the COVID years, and even the results have, uh, I think, underscored what has been a difficult period. And for me personally, in terms of watching and being involved historically, and then uh, seeing choices made. So, my view of Foster as a head coach is that he makes a good assistant coach. I've viewed his time at the Chiefs, even his time in the Chiefs pre Rennie and Rennie coming along, and of course things change. Uh, and developed players can come in that can add to it, but Rennie brought success. And and Foster is part of the team with Hanson as the head coach. I mean, you can give him credit there, but he hasn't, he never was one who I found convincing to be a head coach, and yet he's the All Blacks head coach. So what I'm about to say here and should be elevated in light because I think you can say that the challenges that Foster has gone through, his ability to be resolved and to show resilience and not allow a really challenging context to define him, has effectively led him to his 2023 season. And of course, credit must be made and given and paid to the NZRU because I think they've navigated it reasonably well uh, in light of the various challenges with the players who are obviously loyal uh, to Foster, but also the reality that these results couldn't continue. And so, I just, I mean, think about recently, Ian Foster's daughter was part of the Football Ferns and uh, the All Blacks played at Mount Smart Stadium versus the Springboks because of the FIFA World Cup. And he was on site for the Football Ferns at Eden Park. And I can just imagine if 2023 had continued the recent run, how difficult and challenging would it have been for him to been uh, the man whispered about and talked about because as you probably know uh, everyone in New Zealand is an All Blacks or rugby expert. We know the code, well, at least we think we do and if you think you do and you're convinced of that fact then at least you probably or maybe sound like it or are willing to give it a go. So it's challenging. It's challenging, the most important job in the country, All Blacks captain, maybe All Blacks coach is second in line. And that's probably why one of the reasons Richie McCaw, if he was on the ballot, probably many would vote for him because not only his standing, uh, but how the, the way that he is viewed by uh, a watching world inside uh, our country and the way he carried himself and, and showed the valor and honor on the field uh, led from the front. And so 
you could say the challenges that of Foster's reign have really provided and laid the foundation for what has transpired in 2023, even with his group. Like, I think the players really do play for him. I think, uh, I think of his connection, even when he got the job with Bowden Barrett, how he stuck with Bowden Barrett, when I would, would have changed. And even now, the, the will of Jordan at 15 is something that is pretty hard to, to uh, deny. I guess as long as he shows himself on the wing, then that's not necessarily a conversation we have to have. But I think one of the reasons that Foster stayed with Bowden Barrett, and one of the reasons why Bowden Barrett spoke up when the decision process was being uh, undertaken around 2019 and was because of the relationship. And even think of David Harvilli after the surprise in South Africa when the All Blacks were able to take the second contest which really changed the conversation, which really changed Foster's future because Scott, Scott Ra- Razor Robertson had been shoulder tapped and had been told to get his, his team together because no one really expected that things would happen. And David Harvilli, out of the Crusaders, a cool part of the Crusaders, spoke positively of Ian Foster. And Ali Sevier, another one. And so you could see that the players are playing for their coach. And I think probably one of Foster's Weak points has been uh, whom he surrounded himself with. You know, one of the things in the recent years, or the recent two cycles, uh, 2007 to 2011, and 2011 to 2015, even 2015 to 2019, so you could say three cycles, um, and even leading in, I mean, it's even longer than that. The All Blacks coaching uh, setup has been more than just one man. It's more, been more than a one-man job. It's been about a collective. And so 2019, that collective was at its weakest. Good coaches, no doubt. Talented individuals, but not of the standing that had been previous. And I don't think there's any coincidence that as Foster has surrounded himself with guys of the caliber of Joe Schmidt and Jace Ryan, that... Uh, the results have followed and so part of being um, a good leader is knowing your weaknesses and being able to surround yourself with those who can make up for those and so as we look at 2023 I think you can say that Foster's challenges the things that have been so difficult for him and for his family have been the making of him and even his, his reality that's in front of him Scott Razor Robertson is the coach of the All Blacks from November 1. So no matter what happens in this World Cup, then Foster's reign is over. And so the encouragement to stay present in his life, to embrace the moment and to make the most of the moment is very much uh, his world and something that uh, he can only control. And he's been given this uh, time and given the support, and so he is taking it on. And the results in 2023 have followed this form. And so I give Foster credit. I think that he will have learned a lot, and his ability to be able to stay in a context when his employees, or sorry, employers, not employees, his employees were, if you talk about the players, were behind him, but his employers were... Um, placed in a corner and so they tried to make uh, I guess a best, the best scenario, the best setup of the scenario that they've been given and they didn't think I think, didn't think changing at this late point was the right way forward and so they found what they could and, and uh, Foster was able to, to find his assistance and I give them a lot of credit to what's transpired with this All Blacks side. And uh, that's collective, is showing itself. What will transpire? It's tournament rugby. Many things can transpire and we just don't know what will be in 2023 in France in the coming weeks. We've already seen injuries happen. We've seen what uh, has happened with foul play just recently and what could transpire. No doubt there'll be more shock, horror and awe in uh, the coming weeks. And there's been someone else just even more recently that I think has encouraged this type of 
reflection and encouragement for you. No matter what you're going through and no matter what the situation looks like, what can happen if you persevere? What can happen if you uh, become more intentional? What can transpire if you begin to commit yourself in a new way and, and maybe look to even extend uh, your repertoire as the car is backing up in front of me and it's rather interesting. What can happen uh, into your various contexts where they may not, not necessarily look as bright. I mean, I don't think Foster's coaching future looked very bright at all uh, after Dalsprud. But the miracle at Joburg and just the difference. You could see at the end there was a there was a heartbeat to the All Blacks and what that has meant, how that has transformed. And so I'd encourage you to persevere and to don't look at the things that are before you that may be uh, not so positive in your um, in your close perception or close interpretation. Um, see that what can transpire as you persevere and as you overcome those various things and what they can do for you as a person. Because who we are, yes, situations impact, but it's the character of the man and the woman and the ability to be able to overcome that uh, will be definitional into our future. And, and, and just recently, uh, Tamaiti Williams is one who, I guess, exposed it in a different way. And no, hasn't been through the drama of Foster and wasn't exposed to, um, you know, his own future in a rugby world being in jeopardy. But the Crusaders were losing props, you know, faster uh, than they, they were losing championships. And of course, they haven't lost any in the, in the past number of years. So, and so this young man who seemingly had all the physical gifts was given an opportunity was given a platform, was required to play all these matches because he wasn't a test player, so he didn't have to stand down, but he was required. And that elevated him and gave him the type of exposure to Foster and to the others involved to confirm that he could handle test rugby. And so this is yet to be told, but a young man who could be a definitive part of an All Blacks detonation squad off the bench will have that place because of what transpired, because of the challenge, because he was given an opportunity, because he was given it before time. I mean, if there weren't injuries in the Crusader squad, then it's probably going to be pretty difficult for Tamaiti Williams. You're going to say, give him, more, give him another season, give him some, I mean, a couple of games here and there, but these other players have earned their stripes and so they are the ones who are going to be playing but yet he's been required to step up to that proverbial plate to uh, handle more than expectation and that's not only showing an ability but it's also no doubt translated into belief and he's talked about the recent article I read on stuff in fact I've read it today I think uh, he talked about Cody Taylor and how he's been helpful and just how even in the All Blacks uh, set up, how he hasn't wanted to be late you know, on the team bus and various things. But these challenges, these things that we wouldn't necessarily choose or we wouldn't necessarily expect are going to happen into our lives uh, can be the making for us. And so I would say even more so that we need these things in our lives because they are what actually lead us into real growth. And so where you are at, no matter what, whether or not you're at school or whether or not you're more you know, into the retirement end of life's journey, then I'd encourage you to challenge yourself, to look for opportunities for growth, to not shy away from you know, the difficulties that might be before you. And if you are in a difficult situation, to realize that that context will draw you out, will draw you forth into, into embracing certain mindsets and certain ways 
because uh, of the nature of what is before you and you wouldn't do that we don't we don't choose our wars we don't choose our battles willingly generally speaking they are thrust upon us oh as I slow down for that little bum they are thrust upon us and they require of us something that we wouldn't volitionally uh, take on without and if we see those things as catalytic and as encouragements to become the people who we wouldn't be without, then we can have the type of attitude to say, this bump here is a stepping stone uh, into the future. And so I think we can learn that from an Ian Foster. We can learn that, you know, from a Mighty Williams. One, can you learn that through real difficulty and through real challenge? Maybe if it's a Mighty Williams through opportunity. Whatever it is, whatever it is that's outside your expectations, and we all live with expectations. We live with a sense of what will transpire. But it's when we have that attitude that looks to those things and doesn't view those as roadblocks, but as stepping stones, that we actually can grow into becoming the people that without those we wouldn't become. Let's do that, eh? Let's embrace those realities. And let's realize that no matter who the people we look at as inspiration and our aspiration, that they're people that have faced various challenges and have made certain decisions. And there's no reason why you cannot make those decisions where you are placed, no matter what part of the world. The All Blacks aren't in the center of the world in terms of geographically. It isn't a main center in terms of uh, uh, culture, in terms of, of leading uh, the world of ideas. New Zealand is where it is, and yet this rugby team has an outsized impact because of things that are about it, of, of consistency, of a record over a long period of time, of sustained success, of an ethos and attitudes that mean that other sporting teams, other organizations, other people gravitate and are inspired and light. And they have a narrative, a story, because we all live inside a story. And I'd encourage you to find that greater story. And there are greater stories out there, the stories that take us outside of ourselves and that call us to more and that say, you are made for more than this. And grasping that and celebrating the life and the days you are given. I'm at a rather busy intersection, so I will take note. Look at that, not even very many cars, so I'll get across here before I say car pie and farewell. Thank you for watching. Maximize your moments. Celebrate the days. It's the joie de vie. Let's do it, people.